Previously on Roll Gay Roleplay. Welcome to Deli Furtado, where I know what you want and <sighs> I got what you need. Yeah, Bass trotting in on a horse through the front <laughs> doors and goes, Blur ass! Blur ass! <laughs> okay, uh, there's a person with a hood over their head and sunglasses on. It's like, ah, that's me. Shh, shh, shh. Come here, come here. I found him. We are meeting new friend, and it is time to get talking, my man. And I will sit down, and I will hand him a mimosa. Oh, thank you. And this way, we are just friends meeting before brunch, you know? Yes. Nothing suspicious. Here, here's, here's what I need you for. I'm gonna, he pulls, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out two little plastic containers of a chunky red sauce. This one is a family recipe that's been passed down since my grandmother. And this other one is what they sell here at this deli. I need you to get the person that owns this, who happens to be my ex-boyfriend, to confess that he stole my recipe after he broke up with me. I'm pretty sure I can solve this mystery in like 10 minutes if we just want to do this here. I don't trust you, so no. No, no, I'm interested. Hold on. What? (gasps) You then hear from the kitchen some dishes breaking, a loud scream, and someone goes, there's a man eater. (laughs) Okay. People start fleeing from the kitchen, screaming, and you hear a loud, Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and don't worry about your intros today, guys. I got this. Hi, I'm. my name is Katie, the panic-stricken spring chicken, and I play Inspector St. Tit. That rhyme? I wouldn't call Katie a spring chicken. It's because I'm so young, don't forget that. Well, panic-stricken doesn't rhyme with summer fruit, so I did what I could. <laughs> Aren't we all summer fruits on the inside? Uh, hi, I'm Brandon, and I play Bay, and I've never met anyone as attractive as I find myself. Okay, where's the lie, though? (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing real ones this time, they're not all jokes. Hi, I'm Tisha, and I play Rux Baldacino, and I don't hate you if you eat meat, but I do think you're an awful person with no morals who should burn for your murderous ways. Wait, okay. do you think I And be- I'm Jonathan, and I play Zastasha Felzar, and I'm so gay I eat corn on the cob the long way. Oh. Ouch. I hate that you got my inflections. <laughs> like, I don't listen to your voices, like, for 30 hours a week. And I'm Jonathan. <laughs> and i have Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that was a read. That was a read, bitch. I wrote too much for the library. I had to get some out this time. Hi, my name is Chris. And legally, I have to change rooms when I take off my shirt on TikTok now. <laughs> You know what? Next time we record, we're all going to be Chris, and we're all going to go after you, because that's how I feel now. (laughs) What did I do? Hi, I'm Chris, and bisexual erasure. (laughs) Hi, I'm Chris, and... Oh, did it cut all of that? That'll be on my personal recording. I made a fart noise. Great. (laughs) Yeah, cut it, because you have all those noise filters on. Okay, great. (laughs) Hi, I'm Chris, and I think eating white rice is my entire personality, and that's okay because other people find me attractive, and I'm just gonna go with it. I have... That's not true. He also drinks Bang. <laughs> yes, get my oh breakfast my God. right. Like, how does it feel not having any intrinsic motivation? Yeah, fuck you, Chris. <laughs> it must be hard. <laughs> well, this is a great start. <laughs> personality of a saltine cracker i like how um i like how chris just like gave us like lighthearted reads and now we're attacking his character (laughs) (laughs) okay um it's it's not an eye for an eye it's an eye for your entire soul (laughs) you brought this on yourself i hope you had a high self-esteem because now we're going to (laughs) chop it down like wood for paper (laughs) 
Chris can't even spell self-esteem. Wait. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'm Wait. done. <laughs> sorry. I'm a lot of things. I don't think I'm dumb. I just act uh-huh. like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Chris. You do have a personality. No, you do have. It's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. What's this question? Love you. Wow. <laughs> we have a question for today. Um, Our question is, what was your dream job when you were a kid? My dream job was, is I wanted to be a potter, like someone who like made pottery and stuff. I went to like arts camps sometimes as a kid. There was a local potter who realized you can make a lot of money by holding art camp in the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was super, 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 super fun. And I really enjoyed it. Um, Or I wanted to be a marine biologist who worked part time as a potter. But (laughs) every kid in the 90s wanted to be a marine biologist, number one. Yeah. Number two, yeah. however, I have grandparents who live close to the ocean, and so I actually went to a marine biology camp and dissected a shark. And it was really funny because we split up into two different gendered groups, the boys and the girls. And the boys all started off being like, hey, 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 we're going to cut this shark open. And by the end of it, all the girls were cutting open the shark and being like, wow, look how tiny the brain is. Look at these internal structures. And all the boys were like, I need to go sit outside. <laughs> And Isn't it was that always really how fun. it goes, though? That sounds about it's right. It's always yeah. how it goes. It was just really fun and interesting. Speaking of brains, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon when I was younger. Mm. Oh, wow. Cool. Ambition. Yeah, and then and then I got into the medical field, and it was not for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm too sensitive. Death hurts. I can't do yeah. it. Fair. Uh, speaking of neurosurgeon, whenever I was a child, I wanted to do whatever... It landed me in a beautiful home with several uh, beds and bathrooms. So I said, okay, I know doctors and lawyers make a lot of money. So I want to be a doctor lawyer. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. And then um, I started watching, what was that show? Um, Abby Lee Miller's Dance thing, Dance Moms. Um, so then I wanted to be a doctor lawyer who also owned a dance studio. Yes. <laughs> Barbie. I'm Dr. Lawyer Dancer. Yeah. I'm Dr. Lawyer Dancer. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I am Abby Lee. MD. Uh, MD, PhD, attorney at law. <laughs> and so here we, and here we are. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I mean, every single child is the star of their own Barbie movie. Like, let's be honest. I wanted to be like a, I was supposed to be a doctor. That's what my mom always told me I'd be growing up. So I was like, I'm going to be a doctor marine biologist potter. So Ooh. I'll do the doctor thing because I have to, you know, and then I'll do the marine biology as like a, when I retire as a job. And then I'll be a potter on the side for fun. Yeah, make okay. your own fish bowls. My ch- own I fish learned bowls. about marine biology from my childhood friend. And she wanted to be mm-hmm. a marine biologist. She's now a forensic sci- scientist. Like, what's her name from? Uh, for fish. So, for, bones. <laughs> from bones. Yeah, the gothic girl. Yeah. Um, that's nice. literally her whole like personality. Yeah, I learned about marine biology, so I also wanted to be a marine biologist. Thank you for unlocking that memory for me. Wow. We're, we're, yeah, we just, wanted to, we just wanted to be everywhere all at once. So. Yeah. Speaking I, uh... of well-paying jobs that get you great homes and talking over Chris, yep. my dream job as a child was to be an ice cream man because you could have all the ice cream you wanted to eat. And also, the ice cream man in our neighborhood would like trade ice cream for Pokemon cards. Oh, hysterical. And I'm sure he made Ooh. bank off of these gullible ass kids. So, like, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. That's really funny. Right. Here's a fucking SpongeBob pop for your first edition holographic Jarzard. Right. Thanks, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Tough shit, kid. Okay, but now you're an architect. And I think it's really funny how it's like, we all wanted to be like, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. But now I'm like a teacher. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I do. And you're like, I wanted to be an ice cream man. And now I'm an architect. <laughs> right. You... I wanted to be an ice cream man that robbed kids. Specifically. You knew a good con when you saw one. <laughs> right, right. I'm not dumb. <laughs> when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a professional wrestler. I think I've said that before. That explains so much. Oh, I wanted to be a wrestler so fucking bad. We, uh, we saw the, the hospital quite a bit because I was into wrestling and my brother was seven years younger than me. So we've, mm-hmm. we've had some stitches and some things, you know, butterflied cast. Mm-hmm. I threw that boy around. It's a luck. I'm so glad he's alive. <laughs> and the only other career that I considered, like, when I was really young, or even when I was just, I'd say even a teenager, I was still hell-bent on being a wrestler. 
but I had similar to Tisha, I wanted to go into the medical field. I wanted to be either an EMT or a like ER nurse, ER doctor. Uh, but also mm. I was an EMT for a hot minute and realized it was not for me because similar to Tisha, I just, my couldn't handle it. I was not stoic yeah. enough for the job. And I realized that I was yeah. like, I'm a detriment in this ambulance. I'm never going to go in this again. But yeah, I wanted to be a wrestler. And my mother recently told me, like last year, she was like, oh man, I was doing everything in my power to make sure that wasn't going to happen. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> so now I'm like, I'm trying not to convince. I'm like, I'm going to go to wrestling school now. At, when I turn 37 this year, I'm like, that's going to be my gift to myself. Oh. That would actually be so cool. Please. I yes, don't want to do it. Chris. Please don't. Just, I'm sure there's a camp. That's embarrassing. I just don't know that I'm physically capable to do it anymore. I am not in my 20s. I am your mother, and I'm shaming you out of this, so don't do it. No! I'm your father, and I think that's fucking sick. <laughs> no, and I follow people who make wrestling outfits online, and I'm like... <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm in the groups where they're like, yo, if I want to make this zigzag applique on this little speedo thing, stay flat. What do I use? A surge stitch? Do I interface it? And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, it might be happening, everybody. Uh, help me come up with my wrestling name. Our um, next question will be, what do we want to pursue now that we're older? But we feel like we shouldn't pursue well, it because we're older. Oh, I just want to be rich. I don't want to have a job. <laughs> Same. My yes. dream job is to be born rich. <laughs> yeah, uh, being an adult is realizing working for a living is bogus. Oh, scam. And just, scam. Scam. It's a scam. Mm -hmm. Speaking of wrestlers, we have a case we need to get back to. Speaking of scams. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of scams. Uh, we have a fight to get back to, actually. Not wrestling. Yes. <laughs> That's right. You are in between cases right now. You just took on a case from Bluis uh, Nachos. Yes, oh, Louis yeah. Nachos, and he wants us to investigate his ex and prove that he stole his grandma's recipe for tomato pesto. And we're going to take his ass to court. Uh, oh, and the plan was to have one of us hired part-time and work there to learn how to make the pesto sauce and then send the exact recipe and measurements to... Which was Bay's idea that they came up with by themselves. False. False, I have <laughs> notes. It was Rex's ideas first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we're going to do some light uh, internet uh, defaming as well as part of the extended timeline. And then all of a sudden, there's a man eater. Yes. In the deli, in the back of the deli. Make you work hard. Good thing they didn't turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is making me want to play Just Dance like two. <laughs> I'm a scary scar. I don't think anything beats the promiscuto reference Girl. last episode. Yeah, that was me, by the way. So good. <laughs> now, Brooke said it first. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we're uh, picking up. A loud roar just echoed from in the kitchen. Oh, and you no, see uh, workers. <laughs> what? What a dark horse. Because you said roar, you get it, Katie. Perry. Yeah, I did. Okay, it took some time. <laughs> and then Brandel came in with uh, dark horse. But that was kind of like lame, so. I oh, no, you did Wow, sorry, we can't be all California okay. girls. I'm just saying things now. All right, I'm not going to add Katy Perry to my mm -hmm. list anymore. I've got other... Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? <sighs> Guys, I just want to play Just Dance 2003 now. <laughs> oh, no, that <laughs> no, that's not what I call. <laughs> Do it. Don't. All right, so um, we heard a roar. Um, we heard a Katy Perry in the back. And what happened, Chris? People are running out of the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? You hear a roar, and there's a commotion going on. I think Bay gets we back on Angelica and goes, follow me, follow me, follow me, down, down, down. Yeah, let's uh, get out of here. It's in God's hands now. No, no, no. Uh, excuse me. No, um, this would be a great opportunity for us to be uh, not only like crime solvers, but like the heroes of the day. And we could take Sony picture, uh, pictures of this and put it on Tentacle. I think that we should go back there and we should stop this monster from attacking the citizens of this deli frittata. Frittato. Frittato. Frittata. Did they sell Frittata. Nelly Frittatas? Of course they sell Nelly Frittatas. Oh my god. So we should go back there and stop oh them. God. And I immediately take out my phone. I'm going to take a picture and I say everyone pose um, and say biblical. Actually, uh, can we uh, get under this other light? Baja otro luz. Okay. An espanol. From um, the Spanish album. Nice. Oh my god, I see what you said there. So like, a la, a la otra luz. Uh, we will use that, and then we, we can like, um, take a picture here. So everyone say, um, igle iglesia, and um, we're going to take a picture. Yeah, Linda's the two bunny I ears. Iglesia? Ch uh, church. Wait, does Rex know Spanish? Does no, Rex know Spanish? I don't think so. 
Um, I don't think so. And uh, I'm going to immediately type in uh, saving the day again. Um, and I put like a sigh emoji. Never a dull moment for a girl on the go. Uh, hashtag biblical. Hashtag oh uh, grab life by the horns. And mm. <laughs> um, I say, okay, so like Rux, you should go in first. Lynn is making mental notes to never work through the night again. Like this has just been very bad. Okay. So you want me to just go in the kitchen and see what yelled out man eater? <laughs> uh... I think that we should maybe, you know, spell, spell up. I got a seven perception. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else roll your perception too. Oh, shucky ducky. Okay. Oh, not 20. Mm-hmm. I got a 22. And I got a 17. Okay. So maybe Rux, you start to take a, maybe a, a step towards the kitchen after being encouraged. <laughs> Bay is still trying to get everybody out of the restaurant and wondering why no one's following them. And Rux, as you're approaching, you and Lynn both see from the kitchen door, there's like a swinging kitchen door with that circle glass that you can see through, right? Mm -hmm. As you're approaching the door, there's a yellow eye that appears in that glass circle. Uh, There's like a hard bill in front of the eye and a white stripe going down a black feathered face. Hey, I think it's a duck. Is it a, um, out, out of game, is this a cockatrice? It's not. Oh, shit. I mean, shucks. I'm going to send you guys a picture of what you're seeing. We fought a giant banana last campaign. You think it's going to be something normal? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's an escaped dinosaur. Oh, no. Okay, but first of all, it's serving fashion. <laughs> is it fashion? It's serving mm-hmm. bill, brows, yeah. lashes. Hello. Like, that is avant-garde, haute couture. Like, it's giving. Okay. Uh, and as, uh, as you notice it, Let's, let's, let's add a little danger to this. As you notice it, it opens its mouth and you see rows of sharp, big teeth. Okay, it's a carnivore. <laughs> it's a man-eater. <laughs> Tabernacle. As it sees you, it starts to run away from the door, or it leaves your sight, and the door swings wide open. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And you can see a long black tail with a white tip on the end uh, running out of your sight. Um, we need to go get it. All right. It's some kind of raptor, I guess. Uh, Bay, come here. I leave Angelica to get the patrons out of the store. This is the, the worst fucking morning. This is so fucky. This is the worst. All right. I think we need to go catch that dinosaur. There's a reward or something. Is there not? Rex is going to run up. All right. Whatever you say, boss. And Rex runs after it as... As they are running after this raptor bird, they touch themselves to give them protection from poison. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. All right. I say, okay, we'll charge. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gun it. Like, I'm running. I'm booking it. Heading into the kitchen? Yes. Okay. Uh, while Lynn is running, he pulls a weird, uh, like, techie-looking bracelet out of one of his pockets, and it's his, like, tech shield. We've decided in this world um, a shield is not, like, a big clunky piece of metal that you carry around. It's, like, a weird little holographic shield that pops up on a bracelet. Mm-hmm. And he's got it in one of his many, many cargo pant pockets. So now my AC is 13. Okay. Nice. Uh, Rex, you're like, okay, like, Rex, we need to go. I understand that you probably, like, had a wilding, kooky, crazy night, but, like, there's a whole dinosaur that's gonna, like, attack people, and we need to do this for the tentacle, okay? So come on, let's go. And the number of teeth, did you see that fucking thing? It had, like, six rows. I was like, oh, maybe it's herbivore. It will eat all the salad and then sleep. No, it is not eating salad. Um, how close are we now to the dinosaur bird? Once you enter into the kitchen, you can now kind of assess the scene. There's two of these large feathered raptors. The black and white uh, on them is not fur. It is all feathers. And I'll show you the full look of them now. And these beasts are most, they are bigger than most of you. Rux, you probably have a height advantage on these guys, but still big, long bird raptors. Yeah. Oh, they look so cute until they open their mouths, but they look so cute. Yeah. And you see the freezer door in the kitchen is wide open and you can hear a, Oh, help, oh, help, oh, help. We need to get these dinosaurs into the fucking fridge. They're cold-blooded, right? Dinosaurs are cold-blooded. But like, there's like, till, I think there's something like someone, someone in the fridge and we probably shouldn't put them in okay. there. We should get that person out and then put them in the fridge, obviously. I, I think we, should, we can just kill these dinosaurs, huh? Can I just shoot it? I'm going to shoot it. I think it's time to roll initiative. 
I don't think we should kill the dinosaurs. I think we should kill the dinosaurs because they're literally... It belongs to them. The zoo. And they got loose. You don't kill them at the endangered species just because it's free. I think I don't first. think I think it's very really ironic that um a slime is talking to me about not killing something when you've tried to kill literal people. Okay, okay, times. okay. Priority number one, we get people out. Priority number two, we try to get these things alive. Priority number three, if we cannot survive, we kill these things. Okay? I think that that is a good idea. Let us go. Plan of action. We need to immobilize, get this person out of the fucking fridge. Yes, team? Bishojo Senshi, Sailor Night Skin, and I'm turning into my starry form. Sailor Night Skin. <laughs> All right, everyone, roll initiative for me. Can I do something before initiative, or? What are you trying to do? I'm just uh, casting divine magic. Uh, I can harness divine power, so I can expend a use of my channel divinity to fuel spells. As a bonus action, I regain one expended slow spot of up to level two. Yeah, that's fine. So, because these dinosaurs are gonna be fun to fight. Oh, there's multiple. Yes, there's two dinosaurs. If you remember from the, uh... I didn't realize they were both here. I'm just bad at listening. Yeah, you've got one hanging out towards the freezer door. Yeah. I got a fucking one. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, one of them is hanging out by the freezer door, where you can kind of hear some uh, chilly calls for help, and the other one is off to your left in the kitchen itself. What's everyone else's initiative? I got Katie's. Minus 14. 18. 14. Uh, that means that Bay, you are up first. Beautiful. Bay is going to look around for a manager's office in this kitchen. Of course there is. I go into it and start ruffling through. Can I make an investigation check for, like, the recipe that we're trying to find? <laughs> sure. Go ahead and roll investigation. I got a 17. So you're going through and you can find a recipe booklet. Sure. Why not? Uh, and you do find a recipe. It's not sub it's not a specific recipe card at all, but you do find the recipe for the tomato pesto. It's not okay. Can I can I just like pocket this whole recipe book? Sure. I mean, you can ab absorb it. Yeah. Do I think that would damage the pages? Do you gotta like space bag everything before it goes inside you? Yeah. <laughs> can I like wrap it in saran and then suck it up? <laughs> yes, of course. There's there's saran in the kitchen. Of course there is. How long is Great. this going to take? Oh my god. Okay. Case, case closed, everybody. That's fair. If you're wrapping it and absorbing it, then great. Bay has collected the evidence needed for the case. And that means that it is the first dinosaur's turn. Uh, if you remember, this is a Cryolophosaurus, in case anyone wants to look up what these uh, look like. But they're like big, they look like penguins. They have the feathers of penguins and almost a look of them, but much scarier and bigger. You said cryo? Cryolophosaurus, yes. So like ice? Ah. Hmm. It's like a, it's like a Are these ice dinosaurs? Junk. They do ah. they? <laughs> Fuck. Continue, please. Their feathers are very similar to penguins. So I, I googled it from the early Jurassic of Antarctica. Yeah. Okay, so then putting them in the freezer won't work. So putting them in the freezer won't work. That was so dumb of me. Sorry. Maybe they're trying to get into the freezer. Why? I mean, if anyone wants to roll history on their turn, I can tell you more about it. Yeah. Yeah. I need to investigate something. But first things first, this dinosaur has got to take its turn. I think we're just going to roll a d4 for who I want to go for, actually. Aw, oh, Lynn. I have a shield. <laughs> actually, who's in front? Rux. That's my answer, then. So this uh, first cryolophosaurus standing in the kitchen, it'll shake its head back and forth, and you'll see a little pouch under its bill start to expand, like it's filling with some air or liquid. And then it shoots its head forward, and out flies an icy gas. Rux, actually, everyone in that, oh, everyone's near that door. All four of you, dex, uh, constitution saving throws, please. I don't think Bay's near it, though. Yeah, Bay's not near it. Am I, I mean, I'm in the manager's office. Is that oh, yeah, that's point? right. Bay moved. So the three of you. Rux. I got a 16. And I got an 18. 19. Oh. Ooh. Okay. The DC for that, uh, Lynn, you, do, you fail. Uh, the other two pass. So let me see. Let me roll the damage first. Uh, so 8, 9, plus 6. So 15 damage to Lynn, 7 damage to Rux and Sestasha. And Lynn is suddenly encased in ice from neck down. Only Lynn's head and one hand stick out from this ice block. 
you are uh, restrained for your next three turns. Great. That is its turn. It gives a little roar, shakes its head. And now we move on to Zastasha. Zastasha, um, pull... Is restrained, like, being paralyzed? Or is it its own condition? It's, uh, I, so I added it on the D&D Beyond. So a restrained creature's speed bonus become, a speed becomes zero, and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. Attack rolls against this creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. The creatures have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's its turn then. Zastasha, you're up. So, yeah, Zastasha pulls out that good old uh, laser rifle, because um, he's in Sailor Nightskin. And mm. I say, away with you, bad guys. And I rolled a natural 20. Damn. Nice. It's time for murder. Um, with my spell branding smite as well. So that's 22 points of damage. And then um, with my branding smite. <laughs> and then. Uh, we're going to add on just a little bit more. Um, because okay. I've had enough of your bull stuff. And four points of damage to that one. And then I'm going to attack again. Okay. Nice. For a 23. I'm sure that hits. <laughs> it does. I know. And Damn. this is going to be f- 20 points of damage. Okay. Nice. So I've done 42 points of damage. And it looks a little shaken. All right, y'all. So these, um, these like, uh, these baddies don't look like they are too happy. Um, they look a little strong or whatever. So I'm just gonna, and I'm going to take a step out of the doorway. Like I'm back okay. in the main space. We need more. If we're going to be dealing with these and they do cone attacks like that, then we need more space mm. to spread out. So I walk out of the room and I'm going to go by the entrance, um, to the actual restaurant itself. Okay. That makes sense. And hold my turn. Then Rux, your turn. Rux is going to touch Lynn and cast Lesser Restoration. You touch a creature and it can end either one disease or one condition affecting it. It says the condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Would it end this? No, if, it's not, if restraint isn't included, then no, because restraint is a different thing. Well, then... Rux is going to use non-lethal damage and uh, javelin the dinosaur. Okay. 23 to hit. That does hit. Are you attacking the same one that Zastasha attacked or the other one? Yeah. Okay. The same one. Uh, Six damage. Okay. Nothing? Not? Okay. Nope. You you threw a javelin at it. All right. And going to do the same thing again. For the double fighting. Okay. 24 to hit. Mm-hmm. Everything's over 20. Now I'm using my javelin of lighting. Lightning. Ah, okay. Nine damage on that. Okay. And then, how do I roll this? Four, plus 46. All right, plus 15 more lightning damage. Okay. You see that the lightning damage doesn't do as much as you think it would. Okay. Well, it's all non-lethal, so. Okay. Oh, mine's lethal. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is that your turn then, Rex? That is my turn. Okay. Then the second dinosaur is going to peek its head out of the freezer and see that the only... Well, there's, oh, there's Bay and there's Rex in the kitchen. Do we still hear the person? Do we still hear the person in the freezer? Yeah. And Lynn, if Lynn's talking, Lynn probably sounds pretty similar to that. So the second one's going to come out and I think we're going to just do the blast again because they both have it. Yeah, because if I get to freeze rocks, I'd love this. All right, it, this one's going to have the same thing. A little sack in its neck is going to expand. It's going to shoot out an icy blast. And Rux, since you're the only one in its sight, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. 26 plus 4 is 30. <laughs> Don't forget, everybody, if you're within 10 feet of me, you get a plus 4 bonus to all saving throws. Oh. Okay. Well, then let me just roll this half damage. So nine damage to you. It would have been 18. But it's not. Correct. So. It's just nine. <laughs> oh, and actually, Lynn, you're still in that site. Your head and uh, hands are still available to hit. So you're not going to be restrained for any longer, but you're not going to be able to pass this saving throw. So yeah, Lynn, if you could take another, what did I say? Ni- uh, 18 damage. 18 points of damage. 
Um, I'm gonna kill Lin. <laughs> He's the favorite. Okay. Yeah, I'm at 17 out of 45 now. Oh, Rex yeah. is going to Rex is gonna put their shield up <laughs> and intercept that damage. Okay. So when a creature you can see hits a target other than you within five feet of you with an attack, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage the target takes by one d10 plus three. Okay. So roll a one d10, or I guess I'll I can roll it. Yeah, you cast it. All right. So six take six damage away from that eighteen. Okay. So twenty three out of forty five. Okay, and then that. A uh, dinosaur is going to crawl its... Uh, it's going to back itself up into the freezer and uh, leave your sight. And that is its turn. Uh, Lynn Spector, you're up. Is there anything you can do while you're restrained? Um, let me take my spells. Um, verbal... What does somatic mean? Uh, hands. Yeah. Or not... No, not touch. You have to use your hands to, like, weave the spell. Okay. Which, if you're frozen solid, I don't know if you can do. That's why I'm looking at all my spells. I've left one hand and a head unfrozen when this happens. But the real talk is I'm going to try and take one of your hands today. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, so first off, I want to do a perception or something. Lynn wants to be like, Lynn is making a bunch of split second decisions right now, if that makes any sense. Like, obviously, the plan where they put them in the freezer doesn't work. If they're cold based, it's getting them more into the freezer because I can cast something that will close that door magically. Um, but we need to get that fucking person out of there before that happens, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know what I mean? Like We've established that Stasha has arcane lock. But we have to get the person out first. Yeah. We have to get that person out first. So, unless there's somewhere else, like, is there another freezer or something? Like, I need to do an investigation check. Is it worth doing non-lethal damage on these dinosaurs? Like, are, because if they're going to fucking kill us, then yeah, fuck the, fuck the, fuck like, fuck the zoo. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so that's why you have dinosaur insurance. I just love how we all, I just love how y'all gain a moral compass whenever it comes to animals, but y'all literally have fought people. Girl, fuck people. <laughs> like, right. because it like makes, animals, it doesn't animals make haven't really wronged sense. me. People are assholes. Be, you're, like, your boss is I'm being like wronged right now. I'm trying to do non-lethal damage. <laughs> My boss isn't me. Consistently. <laughs> um, also, this is a strange question. Are these dinosaurs undead? Mm. So okay, that undead is a really good question though, because if they're like undead, then I have a lot more spells. Cloned from extinction. Yeah. What does that make them? I feel like the are they gonna fucking kill? Like, are they going for blood? I feel like that's a really easy. Like, I don't even like if they're trying to fucking kill us. Like, then it seems like they are. Like, I don't. don't, You know what I mean? What What do you mean? It seems like they are trying to kill. Well, no, just like yes. Okay, yeah. I don't need to use a decision for that. They're trying to kill us. Uh, then yeah, are they undead? All right, roll a uh, roll a perception. Would it be arcana? Would it be history? Let's do perception. Yeah, perception. Because really? all you're doing is arcana. standing there. You're gonna have to notice something for me to tell you it. See, because my intelligence arcana check measures my ability to recall lore about spells, magic items, altered symbols, me- magical traditions, planes of existence, and inhabitants of those planes. The DM has spoken. Okay. <laughs> yeah because i got a fucking one okay (laughs) lynn is pissing himself but it's all solid (laughs) oh maybe that melts the ice i got an eight okay well then there's now a lynn is fully ice except for one stream coming out of their pants oh i don't like that yeah (laughs) i don't understand how not (laughs) lynn's just trying to warm themselves up that's all he cold he's cold time for another shower i guess so uh, and Lynn, yeah, Lynn, you couldn't give a shit whether they're undead, alive. You're you're cold and you're not enjoying it, and you've pissed yourself. Okay. Which is how you definitely did not plan to spend your Wednesday. <laughs> That's not how I plan to spend my morning. Anything else you can do, Lynn? <laughs> give me two seconds. Sure. I'm just seeing if there's anything that I have that can move the person. You could. Pro- I don't imagine the dinosaurs tied them up. You could probably yell at them to get out, so we could. Like, yell your plan uh, They're ice. They're probably encased in ice like us. Chris said that uh, if- Tell them to piss. And also remember that the that dinosaur- No, the, remember that dinosaur was- Like, he, it had his head in there. It was probably like- That person's probably been chomped up a little bit. Yeah. But just a little bit. <laughs> and also, like, it's in there now. The One of them's in there right now. 
So if, if that civilian got up and that dinosaur is right next to it, there's going to be an attack of opportunity. So someone needs to go in there and grab it, grab that person that could actually take a hit. Yeah, I got the hint, okay? <laughs> someone needs to got go the in hint. there and... <laughs> <laughs> I heard you the first time, okay? Yeah, Lynn is just going to cough and be like, guys, I cannot, I am just frozen. Is there, is there any saving throw? Like, No. No, three turns. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry if you said that, Chris, my bad. That's why it would have been really nice to hit all three of you at once. Chris is like, I'm going to fuck you. Yep, you're just not good at it, Chris. No, it's just like... wait. Oh, 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 I'm going for rocks now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just a joke. Yeah. Please don't oh wow, All that work that Lindsay put into that lion face, that lion body. <laughs> now you will be murdered. Gone. Come on, Rex is a nice guy. Rex is a nice them. Nice person. Oop, okay. nice lion. I think I know what I can do next turn, but yeah. Okay, then we're back at the top of the Order of Bay. You have secured the notes, the recipe book. What are you doing now? Uh, Bay would like to pick up the office phone and call the future police. Sure. I mean... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Am I noticing that Bay has been useless this fight? I'm sorry. I, I solved the case. How many cases have you solved by yourself? I mean, but we... we I th- solved it in one round, motherfucker. We <laughs> have already established that there's someone needing to be saved. I picked up the phone, Chris. What happens? Sure. You want to contact the authorities? I would like to contact the authorities. Okay. What's your emergency? There was Officer Rice Balls there. Um, yeah, let me patch you through. Hang on. And as Bay is on hold, we will put the fight on hold so that you and I can head to the gay agenda. This is The Gay Agenda, the middle part in some of our episodes where we thank patrons, give updates on the show, and highlight some queer artists. Today I've got two new patrons to thank. First, thanks to our newest bucketeer, Jonathan. And you are our third Jonathan on our Patreon, which makes it tied for n- n- most common name. And thanks to our newest pickle of our eye, Bear Bandit Crow. Your merch pack is on the way right now. Hope your dice roll well for you and you enjoy everything that comes with being a pickle. If you would like to check out our Patreon for bonus episodes, polls that help shape the game. Speaking of, our next case is being picked via Patreon poll, and every time I've looked at it, it's been tied. It was tied at 3 votes, it was tied at 15 votes, it's just tied no matter what. So if you want to join our Patreon and break that tie for me, go to patreon.com backslash rollgayroleplay. Or you can find the podcast on TikTok at rgrppodcast, or you can find us on Instagram at rollgayroleplay. And before we get back to the show, we have an artist to highlight. This one's a webcomic at tenofswordscomic.com. Ten of Swords is a comic about hitting the bottom, but always shooting lower. If you're on the rocks, you may as well enjoy it. I'm looking through the site now, and they're like four panel jokes that are like really cute comics. So go check out tenofswordscomic.com. That is all spelled out. Or you can find them on twitter.com slash t-e-n-e-r comic. And Bay, after a few seconds of generic hold music, you hear. Oh, no, he's not at his office. Uh, okay, well, there's an emergency at the Deli Furtado. There are two escaped dinosaurs. We are trying to subdue them peacefully, but if they were civilians, we might have to use lethal force. Okay, if you found the dinosaurs, we've gotten a lot of prank calls for this lately, so can you please describe it to prove to me that it's the right dinosaur? They're like penguiny. They're they're in a freezer. They look like skunk things. Oh shit. Okay. Well, what's uh Deli Furtado you said? Yeah. Lots of screaming, lots of people in danger. Okay. The freezing people. Okay, if you can secure them, I can have authorities there in about 10 minutes. So just keep... We would like the oh, authorities here to help secure God. them, if possible. <laughs> yes, 10 minutes they will be there. Just keep eye on the dinosaurs, and um, you can try and call them if you want to, if you know their names, but I don't have them here. You don't have the... You don't... They respond to their names. That will stop them, but you don't know their names? Yeah, they respond to their names. That's what it says in my notes, but I don't remember what their name is. I feel like, can you, do you, can you call another officer if I'm nearest to them? Uh, I don't know. I know, they say really it. I know they say it when you walk into the zoo, but I totally forgot. I, 
Oh. Fuck, wait, did we did no, we hear we that when we walked into the yeah. zoo? One second. Nope. What do you mean one second? Get out of here, Katie. I'm gonna get there first. <laughs> Can I do I a have history a check? Memory. I'm That's the only so thing I've sorry. got going for me right now. You know what? If we're gonna if we're playing this, if we're going to wait the ten minutes, it takes me ten minutes to recall all information I've ever heard. So Yeah, but one round of combat is six seconds. You know, your what? conversation with this police officer has been way past six seconds, so I don't think we're following rules here. Well, I think this conversation's happening as the rest of the round will continue. Okay. I didn't realize this was going to take multiple turns. Yeah, honey, what do you mean? Girl, I have to go to church. Brandel. <laughs> okay, I'll stay on hold while you contact the zero. Okay, yeah, we'll have them there as soon as we can. Like, ten minutes or less. We'll have nine minutes now. See, it's already sooner. They're rushing to you, I promise. <laughs> do I know the phone number for the zoo? Well, we'll, we'll do. Just, just pay attention to the dinosaurs. Shit. We'll get there. Do you want to call the zoo on your next turn, maybe? Can you can you forward me to the zoo? This is not an operator service. This is an emergency services, sir. Oh my g- a cab and a hang up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that's my next five turn. Yep, thank you, Brandon. Oh my God. Then it is our dinosaur's turn. Uh I think I'm gonna have some more fun and do a right up front in your face attack, because it can do a few things. Can I, I imagine it's very noisy. Can I close the door to the manager's office so I can talk on the phone properly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just clanging and roaring in the background. You're like, oh, that excuse me. <laughs> yeah, this, the dinosaur that's been attacked over and over again is going to kind of like shake off its head, lick a wound that it's got on its shoulder, and it's going to lunge towards Rux. And it's, it's going to be claws out. I'm going for claws first. So it's going to make a claw attack first on Rux, and it has advantage on all of its attacks, thankfully, because that first one was a one. Uh, 19 to hit? That hits. Okay. Why does it have advantage on attacks? Um, I'll tell you if you roll insight. It does, though. Because it's in its, like, cold area, probably. No, because the only thing that I can think of, like, they're both animals, so it's that, it's that fucking, like, the wolves. They're in a pack. There we go. Is that what this fucking is, Chris? Wow. Maybe. I'm sorry. I've been DMing a lot lately, and I've been killing people. So this is like... Pack tactics. Absolutely. <laughs> pack tactics. You a whole hoe. Totally. Totally. You a whole bitch. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Continue. You're a hoe. I do not see dinosaur names in our game notes. Uh, I The only notes I put in there was... I. Wrote the name of the, the dinosaur freaking thing. dinosaurs, Cryolophosaurus, and I spelled it really funky. <laughs> what if it's like Cry Baby the Cryolophosaurus? Mm, you should just start screaming things. You should be useful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, me? No. no. <laughs> Bang. Honk Puddin. Mm. I could really go for a hot dog right now. <laughs> I think it's a hot dog. Remember the hot dog bag. guy's name, but you don't really. Okay. Uh, Meownathan. Meownathan. So your first <laughs> attack, it takes a good claw slash on Rux, and then it's going to go for a bite. Nom, 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 nom. And it's going to roll again with advantage. Does a 17 hit? Yes. Okay. Then it doesn't need to roll again. All right. And that's 2d6 plus 3. 9, 10, 11, 12 damage to Rux again. You've been bitten. And that's total between the claw and the bite? No, that's that was each. 12 was the second one. 12. What was the first one? I don't think you rolled the damage on the first one. Oh. 3, 4, so do 6 plus 12, 18 then? Is that right? A total of 18? I just took 12 off. Okay, now do another 6, please. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to use its bonus action and get away from you without a, an attack roll. So... It's going to sneak away real quick like a penguin raptor does. And that's its turn, which means we're moving on to Zastasha. You're now in the dining room. I need to get, I'm trying to get in view of uh, the freezer. All right. So you want to just move yourself so you can kind of beeline? Yeah. I think it's going to be hard because you've got a frozen lin in the way. So if you're going to make a ranged attack, I'm probably going to make it disadvantage for that. It's not an attack. Okay. If you, can, uh, if you just need to see it, then yes, you can see it. Okay. And I'm going to cast Fairy Fire 
um at the entrance of the at the entrance of the freezer um and since the one that attacked rux moved backwards is it closer to the freezer it is closer yeah okay so yeah i'm gonna cast fairy fire each object in a 20-foot cube within range is outlined in a blue green or violet light your choice any creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined in light if it fails a dexterity saving throw for the rate for the duration objects and affected creatures shed dim light in a 10-foot radius any attack roll against an affected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it and the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible so i just want adva- basically i just want advantage on attacks uh if i if i fail a dexterity saving throw is that it yeah okay wait no no can i okay these are these are frost dinosaurs can i do a history or maybe an arcana <laughs> or perception check to see if they are weak against fire wait did you say history Yes, I said pistory. No, that's the Lynn check. <laughs> Can I do a pistory check to see if um, they are weak against fire or something? Yes, absolutely you can. Okay, 19. Okay. Uh, I think that you know that when they're in their cold, they're in their element, and when they have fire around them, they are going to be hurt a little bit more think something else you may recognize is that anytime that they're in a cold element there are several advantages to them uh i immediately say they're weak against fire and like we totally need to get them out of the freezer okay someone lure them okay um would the fairy fire scare them um we need to lure them out with fire like we need i I gotcha that's the only thing i think of and i can't cast fairy fire anymore because my perception check or history check was a action so i'm gonna just I, i yelled that to everybody Y'all got that. And then I'm going to uh, move out of the way so that I don't get coned again. Okay. And end my turn. Then after that, it is Rux. You're up. All right. Rux is going to use a bonus bonus action for Searing Smite. Okay. And my Javelin flares with white hot intensity. And that is a 26 to hit. Oof. I know yeah. that's right. And I'm hitting the one that's already hurt. Sure. Eight damage. Okay. Plus, the attack deals an extra 1d6 fire damage to the target. Okay. One fire damage. Okay. Um, but, hold on, that's not it. And causes the target to ignite in flames. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Wow, what? <laughs> yeah. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. There's no th- At the start of each of its turn, until the spell ends, the target must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 1d6 fire damage. On a successful save, the spell ends. If the target or a creature within 5 feet of it uses an action to put out the flames, or if some other effect douses the flames, uh, such as being submerged in water, the spell ends. When you cast a spell using a spell slot of 2nd level or higher, the initial damage dealt by the attack increases by 1d6 for each slot. I did that at 1st at level, so but I do have one second level slot left. Okay. Alright, so that was my first attack. Okay. Woof. It's currently on fire. Great. I'm, I can see the second one in the freezer right you can see a little bit of it there's some cold air coming out of it making it a little hard to see but you know there's movement in there all right well i'm gonna try to kill this one okay nine to hit that does not hit all right the that's that's my turn but it's on fire so it is on fire uh and it's now the second cryolophosaurus's turn uh it's going to see its friend on fire Probably going to be a little panicky, but it's also going to be a survival mode thing. That'd be such a waste of my turn. Waste your turn. Waste your turn. Because, like, I could ice breath you it should never to put waste the your fire turn. out, but I'm not going to waste my turn on this because I've got a good shot at hurting some of you. Especially since I can just ice blast Lin again for full damage with no repercussions. Chris, that's bullying. Yeah, the second one is in the freezer. It would have to come out, go past me to get to Lin. It doesn't have to it go past that. you. Because I moved it's a cone. Oh. It's a cone. It's a cone. Yep. So I think that's what it's going to do. The slashing was fun to Rux, but I can hit both of you with an ice breath. A little bit more scared, maybe wide-eyed. It's going to peek its head out of the 
freezer, look in Rux and Lynn's direction, and Rux, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Lynn, I'll just tell you what damage you take. Okay. 14. That's a fail. Uh, uh, Zastasha sees that Rux is about to get hit, and a light bulb flashes over Zastasha's head and says, Eureka! And Rux, you can roll an extra d4 for Flash of Genius. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to do that because I have I get rolled a fourteen plus I get a four on plus four on all my saving throws. I got an eighteen. I would assume eighteen. I just wanted to help passes. you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a plus four to it already. You get eighteen. Yeah. So all so my feature the feature that does that. Oh, aura of protection while you are conscious conscious. You grant all friendly creatures, including you, within 10 feet, a plus four bonus to all saving throws. Okay. So I rolled a 14. I get a plus four to that. So it's 18. Okay. 18 does save. So that's 13 damage to Lynn and six to Rux. Rux is going to use their reaction to um, reduce the damage taken by Lynn by 1d10 plus three. Subtract five damage from that. Okay, so eight damage to Lynn. It's okay. I'm at 15 out of 45, so I'm still alive. Okay. Uh, It's then going to move its head back into the freezer, hide itself back in its cold little cubby hole. And I think that's its turn. That's it. We're back to Lynn. This is your second turn in your restrained icy position. Have you figured out something you can do from there, though? I can heal myself. Um, so I am going to cast Cure Wounds at second level. Okay. Um, because I just need to touch myself, and I'm assuming I will just be touching Ooh. my hand to, like, <laughs> the other part of my hand. Sure, that's fair. Like, touch your clasping palm. my hands yeah. together and being like, heal, heal, heal. <laughs> Fuck shit. <laughs> okay, plus 16. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good wow. heal. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Whew. Yep, so I'm back up to 31 out of 45. Okay. Uh- He's looking... A little injured, but still not, like, as grievously injured as he was before. <laughs> sure. Bay, we're back to your turn. I'm on the phone. Yeah, you've got hold music. It's all Deli Furtado. Sorry, I am dying. Then we're back at the top of the order, which means my dinosaur that's on fire needs to make a constitution saving throw. Beautiful. 19, baby. And the spell ends. Okay. I think we'll flavor this to that it runs itself into the freezer to put out the flames. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, they totally have like really good things happen for them and not us when they go in the freezer. So <laughs> that's like no way now. Speaking of, let me just roll something real quick. Totally unbiblical. Uh, and it's not going to take any further action at this time. It's going to just hang out in the freezer with its friend and whoever's crying for help in there, which means Nastasha, you've lost sight on all of them, but you know where the freezer is. Yeah, so I'm going to go in. I'm going into the freezer. Okay. As soon as you approach into the door, Nastasha, make me a constitution saving throw. 17. Oh, that fails. Oh, no, No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Stroke of flash of genius. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Also, you get a plus four to that. Oh, yeah. So 21. Okay. okay. Get out of my okay. face. Well, then, you're still taking some damage from this, just not all of it. That's fine. Uh, an icy cold spray shoots out from the freezer as soon as you get into the site. You duck out of the way before freezing, but you do take seven damage, which is half damage. So seven damage from an icy blast of nitrogen. And now you can continue your turn. Um, I immediately look around for Miss Thing that's been in here, the human, or the, 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 the civilian. You do see someone in there. Uh, Looks like they're wearing some kitchen gear, someone that probably works in the kitchen. Uh, They are frozen similar to Lynn, but there is no hands available, just a head. And it looks like it's had a little bit of chewing on the the cheek so far. Do I clearly see the baddies, the dinosaurs in here? Yes, now you can see them. Um, They're totally in here. And um, this thing, these things have been eating our friend, but they're still alive and we can like save them. Um, And I am going to... Uh, I'm going to attack the we- the one that looks that the one looks like we clearly been putting a beating on it. That's the one sure. I'm going to attack. There's a definite right. difference, yeah. Mm-hmm. 18. That hits for 26 points. That did more damage than my crit. 26 points of damage. 
Yeah, down it goes. Boom! Di- is this lethal or non-lethal? Lethal. Yep, dinosaur dead. Um, yeah, I would like to say at some point, Lynn, like, retconned and said, like, just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also can, um, is taking a potion, is that an action or a bonus action? That's a good question. We can call it a bonus action. I'm fine with that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take this potion that I still, uh, um, that I, um, gainfully at- obtained from that person that gave me a really reasonable price, and I'm going to drink my potion of cold resistance. Oh. Ooh. Oh, that's so smart. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I chug it. I'm feeling zesty and beautiful and now warm. Um, and then that's my bonus action, so then I can still attack again. Go for and it. This, oh, wow. That's not going to hit anything. Do I have any features or traits, Mama? <laughs> any features or traits? Never mind. Um, that, that's, yeah, that's it. And, yeah. Okay. Great. Rux, your turn. How bad is the... Uh, Rux walks into the freezer. Sure. How bad is the, the hurt one looking? Uh, the hurt one is dead. The other one you haven't touched. Oh, it's dead. Okay. All right. That works. Wait, one of them's dead? I killed it. Did you? Yeah. Listen, honey. I'm on yeah, the phone. You closed That's the so door, funny. so you didn't hear me say I just killed them. Oh, all right. Rux is going to cast uh, bonus action searing smite and use their javelin to stab. Okay. With a 25 to hit. Oh, fuck. Yep. All right, that is nine piercing damage. Okay. Plus, yeah, 2d6 fire damage. Mm, okay. 10 fire damage. And they are on fire. Great. Lovely. Anything else you can do? That's it. Okay. Well, then it's that dinosaur's turn, which means it's making a con saving throw, right? Yes. 14 plus 2, 16 to hit, or 16 to save? That saves. Goodness. Yeah, maybe just the fire inside the freezer just isn't cutting it. Yeah. Uh, This dinosaur will move around in the cold air to put the fire out, kind of shake off the pain of it. And Rux, you're in line of sight, right? Oh, I didn't see if the ice breath recharged. Let me see. I'm sorry. That was supposed to be 3d6, not 2d6. Oh, hold on. Because I did it at second level. Okay. So here's one more, plus five more fire damage. Okay. I feel like... I'm not a fire scientist, but I feel like temperature has nothing to do with if a fire stays up. Right, it doesn't. The only reason water works is because it takes away the oxygen, right? I'm making shit up here. There's no no real science in what we're doing. There's a dinosaur in a freezer of a deli. What what about this do you think is real? Yeah, but the part I can't get over is the freezer putting out fire. (laughs) Well, it does. I can only suspend my disbelief so much. Okay, fine. The dinosaur rubs its feathered body against the ice block of a human that's standing in the freezer, putting out the flames. <laughs> Happy? Sure. Does that yeah. damage the person? Yeah, you know what? He's an architect, too. It melts the ice blocks. It melts, melts the ice blocks. No, we're not helping this man. Free now. Actually, you know what? This is a third turn. That, probably, that man probably does just fall to the ground after this. What noise do they make as they fall? <laughs> that. <laughs> I needed to see if it recharged its breath. It did not, which means we're going to have a full-on attack. And I think Zastasha is the one closest to me. Yeah, we're going to charge Zastasha with a couple attacks. First, the claws come out. Mm-hmm. Bring it. And that is, I picked a yellow die and I can't read shit on it. It's a 15 plus 5, 20 to hit. Hold on. Um, so Zastasha uses shield. And a pussy pop in pink shield pops up in front of me and i have a plus five to my ac now for 20 nice. 21 <sighs> okay then the claws hit the shield ricochet off but it goes in for a bite after that hey hey mind your business 17 plus 5 22 mother shit on my Damn. face let's go um <laughs> features and traits features and traits i don't know oh. Uh, 2d6 plus 3, I got two sixes, so 15 damage from that bite. Ooh. Oh. Uh, how was how was Zastasha looking before the bite? I'm at 23 health now. After the <laughs> bite. All right, I'm just going to use that reaction, then the interception, 1d10 plus 3. I'm not going to take that damage. I, I just can't. 1d10 plus 3. Yeah. All right, I reduced it by 10. Wow. 
Yes. Thank okay. you, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> the Cryolophosaurus is going to use its last bonus action to kind of dip itself back into the freezer and move behind this ice person's body, which now that it's the end of that turn, both that body and Lynn's body fall to the ground. Nice. Yeah. And Lynn, it is... We are in the freezer, right? Yes. Me and mm-hmm. Zastasha are in the you, freezer. You, Zastasha, okay. the dinosaur, and the collapsed person are all in the freezer. Lynn, you've just collapsed in the kitchen. Yep. And it's your turn, Lynn. Oh, I take that back. It's at the end of your third turn. So that will end your turn unless there's something you can do before you fall to the ground. Um, I can't touch that guy. No. Mm-hmm. You're still frozen. Um, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt. So a flash of light streets towards a creature of our choice. Make a ranged spell attack against a target. I take 4d6 radi- uh, radiant damage. Damn. Yeah, and that's like the first level. I, I, I can't cast it any lower. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's a 15 plus 7. So above 20. Yes. A 22. Sure. Woof. Okay. <laughs> the frozen one's going to kill this thing. No, I don't think so. It's 11 damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's radiant damage, too. We're fine. Um, a mystical, and any attack roll made against this target has advantage until the end of my next turn, thanks to a dim light glittering on the target. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. So you have advantage, and I am now free. Okay. Then we're back at the top of the order. Bay, you've hung up the phone. Have I gotten through? I imagine I called the zoo immediately after. Oh, sure. It's the zoo. What can I help you with? I need the escape dinosaurs' names. Quick! The cryolophosauruses. Their names. Rexa. Like and? Um, sorry, the edible just kicked in. Hang on. Is that the is that the dinosaur's name? The edible just kicked in. Do you think this pen is blue or black? Oh. People are dying. Where? Uh, Bay. Opens up the office door and goes, Roxa, stop, sit. Oh, God, that's the one you killed. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the only reason you're not getting the other one is because I also forgot. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the edible. Give me another name, you bitch. <laughs> the names of the dinosaur is The Edible Just Kicked In. <laughs> <laughs> but I played it off like it was in- unintentional, right? It was a little... Hang on, I'm getting it. Ah, oh, Jimbo. Jimbo! Stop! You'll uh, see the remaining dinosaur kind of turn its head, cock it to the side. Down. It'll sit down. Thank you. They're at the deli for a tattoo. You can come pick them up. One of them's dead. Wait, wait what? No. Click. The... I hung up. Okay. Okay. Are you just going to hang out with the dinosaur in the freezer until the authorities arrive for you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think we get the guy out of the freezer and then close the door. Absolutely. That's well, I was gonna not say... what Zastasha does. Are you going to kill I... this dinosaur? Absolutely. Why? Why not? It attacked me. <laughs> I think they're... I mean, Bay is at least going to try and stop you if you try to attack this dinosaur again. That's fine. Yeah. I am not. No. <laughs> you're, 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 the person who you built this thing, this whole enterprise with, is like encased in ice, pissed themselves, and has been attacked. <laughs> I have been attacked. (laughs) Rux is bloodied, and you did nothing. I got the dinosaur to stop peacefully. After we literally went through hell and high water. No. No. All right. I do have to say it's Zastasha's turn next. I thought we were out of initiative, but we're not if Zastasha has something to do. So Absolutely. We're going in with um we're going in with our gun and we're shooting. (laughs) It's sitting If you fire that gun, you're fired. Um, that's something that I can just go ahead and take up with our, um, with a lawyer if we're really going to get that far. But also, I, if I'm not mistaken, you're all the way in the office, so I'm not really worried about you. A 25. Yep. (laughs) 17 points of damage as I shoot this bitch again. (sighs) Okay. It, it doesn't look great. It's alive, but it doesn't look great. Um, if you want me to stop, you should probably come in here and do something about it. Purifier in her eyes. If you, uh, Rux, you're up. All right. Rux is going to say, all right, everyone, just, uh, come your tits. It's all going to be okay. Look, this one's not fighting anymore. 
Uh, it's all good. And casts calm emotions over everyone in this area. And I attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people. Okay. Only humanoids, so I think a twenty foot radius sphere. I think that Zastasha is willing. So I don't I'm I'm not gonna roll. Okay. And you've calmed right. the man that's on the ground frozen with a bloody cheek. And so they can't they won't be frightened or charmed either, like if they were before. Okay. And then I'm going to like lean down and use my well of radiance. No, is that what it's called? Lay on hands pull. Okay. Uh, to give five HP back to the downed dinosaur. Can you revive it after being dead? How was that? Was it fully killed it or was it knocked out? It was, I, was, throws? I killed it. Jonathan said lethal yeah, but damage. You would, have had, you would have had to do as much damage to it after knocked out as... Or no, no, no. Um, the killing hit would have had to have been more than its total damage or it would have had to fail three saving throws. No, because uh, monsters do not get death saves. They die at zero HP. I mean, that's a DM choice. I think that's better than the alternative. Which is where you don't get to release the dinosaurs again to have them kill us? Well, where you killed a pack animal and you're sending one of them back to the zoo alone. Can you imagine the heartbreak, the turmoil that dinosaur is going to face? Because the alternative was a dead person with its cheek bit. Yeah. Yeah. I... I think this is Stasha's also right. I've been right from the get go. Rexa is a girl. I don't. I'm. I don't have a spell to bring back from the dead. Um. I just thought if I give this one, since it hasn't been down long, it's like resuscitation is what sure. I was think. I was picturing, but I don't. I don't know the rules like Jonathan does. If y'all revive, I swear to God. Well, you know what? The good thing is you're going to have a little bit of time to figure out what you're going to do with this dinosaur in the freezer because that's going to be on the next episode. Uh. Our next case <laughs> is going to be a wrongful termination suit. <laughs> Our next case is going to be a knockdown drag out brawl between Zastasha and Bay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've been hurt a little bit. I'm down. <laughs> also... Uh, w- when did you guys hear their names? Do you remember when you heard the names of the dinosaurs? Uh, the so. owl date. Right. The owl and date. It was on the owl date. Well, who said it to you, though? I don't know if we did hear it. I don't remember it, but I also don't remember anything. Was it Luna herself? It wasn't my voice. Was it a voicemail? It, it, yeah, you could have just scrolled up to our recording date. It even says Zoo <laughs> on it. Fuck off. And that's where you could have found the names. Garrett said it for us. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny, and I spent so much time going through all of my notes. So weird that that burp sound came through, but your fart sound didn't. (laughs) Well, you know. (laughs) Well, uh, yes, so we'll uh, see what happens with Jimbo and Rexa on the next episode. Till then, I'm Chris the DM. You can find me on all social media at Chris Drinks Lemonade. And I'm Tisha. You can find the podcast at RollGayRollPlay.com. I'm Brandon. And you can ruin my adult body in the Patreon. Yes. yes. Hi, I'm Katie, and I totally forgot that I go next. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm all over social media. So, like, you know, find me or whatever. So, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. 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 An RGRP LLC production. Music by Joe Barsanti.